I obviously like who I am, but I definitely feel like the harp expresses it much better than I ever could. Did I repeat? Yeah. Okay. There was that thing about being an accomplished woman and you had your embroidery and you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the harp was like integral at that time. It was seen as quite a seductive instrument. There were also men that played it in that time. And as a statement of their masculinity, they tuned their harps up much sharper than the women. So they would like come on with their strings really taut. I mean, it's really funny to think about it now, but then I guess in every walk of life, people try to impress each other doing different things. And women got behind it as well, because there was um, Felicite Le Comtesse de Jean Lys, as this really like famous educator of children. She took motherhood to like the next level. She would adopt these children and try and kind of sculpt them into what she wanted them to be. Yeah, tiger mum, but times a million. The main thing is this this piece that I was just strumming away at, which is the one that I wrote for my mum. I'm happy to just, just let it happen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have absolutely no preconceptions at all. And if you feel like you've got a rhythm inside you that you want to set up a groove or something, just go for it. I started because mum chose the harp for me because she loved the Marx Brothers. She loved Harpo Marx and she'd only ever seen the harp on TV. She just had this idea that both her daughters would play music because she never had the chance to learn music. I suppose she was a little bit like Felicité de Jean Lys in that she married into a family that was better off than where, what she'd come from. And so she was able to give us those opportunities turned out to be a lot harder than what she thought because she didn't realise that the heart grew. <laughs> she didn't realise there was like, you know, there's a small model and then there are also extensions. Because she did, she drove, she drove us. She didn't sort of force us to practice or anything like that, but she was the, she was the impetus behind everything that we did, really. I used to hide behind her legs, you know, we would go into shops and she would be like, don't, go and buy this loaf of bread, go on, go on. And I'd just be like, mm, like that, and I'd just hide behind her legs. And then my first performances at school, I got up and the harp was there and I went up and I was so scared I didn't even play a note. That was it, I just couldn't pluck, I couldn't even play one note. The, the next performance that I did, I played a few. And then the way that my sister tells it, I was cheekily like, that's your lot. But it wouldn't have been like that, I'd have been, you know, I'd have been like running away. It wouldn't have been like me coyly going, I'm just gonna tease you with these three notes. <laughs> no, I was not self-possessed in any way. but she just struck gold with the harp like I'm just blessed beyond belief because she managed to choose that instrument that allowed me to have a voice I feel like I've always been shown the right the right way and it hasn't always worked out it certainly hasn't always worked out like financially and stuff like that and because I deliberately wanted to be different. So I kind of carved out like this, you know, this path that no one else had done and going into different genres. I wouldn't push as hard as I push and fight for the things that I fight for if it wasn't for her, the way that she brought me up.
For me, it was perfect, yeah. Mm, done. <laughs> oh my god, done. <laughs>